Revenge of the Sith review, and I gotta be honest, I feel empathy for Darth Vader. Let me explain. Well, at the beginning of uh, Revenge of the Sith, uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan are on a mission to rescue Senator Palpatine. And they get into the ship and they take out a bunch of droids commanded by General Grievous. And there's a showdown between uh, the uh, droids as they get to um, Senator Palpatine, because he's still Senator at this point. And then Count Dooku shows up and he battles both of them and he injures Obi-Wan. And then he loses to Anakin and Anakin is still uh, conflicted as to what's good and what's bad because Anakin doesn't want to take out Count Dooku. And then Senator Palpatine says it's necessary for the greater good. He's too dangerous to uh, not. And so he does it and he still to that moment says he shouldn't have done it. And then they're under attack again, but this is made worse by the fact that an, an unconscious uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is being carried on his back down an elevator shaft by Anakin, and they get help from R2-D2, and they eventually escape <clears throat> the building. And when Anakin returns home, or what back to his wife, uh, Padme. She reveals to him that he, she's pregnant. And Anakin is just over the moon with this news. He's very happy. And he wants to tell everybody. And his wife, Padme, stops him from doing this because she doesn't want him to get into any more danger. And so he leaves it be. And at nighttime when they're sleeping, he has a premonition of her having complications during the pregnancy. And it's revealed that this might come to pass later. And Anakin wants to do everything he can to stop this from happening. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan has left him to take care of council business because he sees Anakin as the hero, even though Anakin is being very humble at this point. He wants him to have his day of celebration. So you can see the love between Obi-Wan and Anakin still there. And through the whole movie, basically, it's continued. And the one thing about it is Anakin is still close to Obi-Wan. And when General General Grievous catches up to uh, Senator Palpatine, I'm just going to say Lord Palpatine, Lord Palpatine, or Emperor Palpatine, he asks about why he did that to Lord Dooku. And Palpatine says that his takeout was necessary because he's going to have a new, even more powerful apprentice, which he plans to have as Anakin, who's been, he's been manipulating this whole time. <clears throat> and the Jedi Order is still about trust and ethics and loyalty and everything like that. And they want Anakin to be patient. And this is conflicting to Anakin because he knows he's the most powerful Jedi in the universe and he wants his recognition. And they're telling him to be patient. And the funny thing is, when he goes and talks to Lord Palpatine, Lord Palpatine is offering him everything that he wants because there's a conversation in the movie with Lord Palpatine that he told Anakin he wants to be, he wants to appoint him to the Jedi Council and be his uh, eyes and ears on the Council. Now, the Council doesn't agree with this because they don't trust Lord Palpatine, even though he's still technically not revealed himself as a Sith Lord yet. And, <clears throat> but they go along with it. But the Jedi have an ulterior motive for going along with this because they want 
uh, Anakin to spy on Lord Palpatine. And they want him to report uh, what he's up to in the center because at this point he's the Supreme Counselor. And so Anakin is very thrilled by this news, but for one fact, and this is why I start to feel empathy for him, because to be on the Jedi Council, you have to be a Jedi Master. However, when the when he gets to the Council and they're sitting in their seats, they have approved his seat on the Council, but they don't grant him the rank of Master. And this sets off uh, Anakin saying, this is not fair, this is unjust, this has never happened before. Uh, it is an insult to not give me the rank of Master, but have me sit on the Jedi Council. And he's very upset because, like I said, at every turn in these three movies, they've denied him what he believes is his right. And it's Obi-Wan that takes him in the hallway and again tells him, calm down, no, nothing is wrong here. You have not been mistreated. Uh, nobody on the council has ever been put on the council this young. And this is a great honor and it'll only be a matter of time before the Jedi Council decides to make you a master. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> and so Anakin uh, plays along, basically. And you can see the rest of the Jedi Council being like, Anakin is not thrilled about his new assignment. And he goes to great lengths, in fact, to deal with this and he even goes to master yoda at one point to deal with his premonition of somebody very close to me is gonna uh take be move on and he's like i don't know what to do and yoda basically tells him you have to learn to detach from those you care about which is really weird because w throughout movies we've been taught that Love conquers all. But for Master Yoda to be like, you have to learn to detach and let things go so you don't miss people or whatever, that's just weird to me. And I don't think he's right on that. So, like I said, I really started to feel by the end of this arc, uh, in this third movie, the end of the second trilogy, uh, empathy for, for uh, Anakin. And there's also a scene where he is with Lord Palpatine and Palpatine and him are having a discussion on what they're going to do. And he tells Anakin that the council has this, has basically decided to betray him. And he's really masterminding Anakin at this point. And they're starting to talk about the force and, Anakin goes, no, the Jedi wouldn't do that. And then he reveals, uh, Palpatine does, that uh, his wife, Padme, is in grave danger and he needs to learn to use the dark side if he wants to save her. And Anakin's still confused at this point because he's like, well, that's not the Jedi way and that's not how we do things. And... <laughs> Palpatine is basically playing him like a puppet at this point where he sits him down and he goes, uh, the, the Jedi council wants to overthrow me and they've asked you to spy on me. Haven't they? And he's like, yes, they have. I don't know what to say. This is not natural. And so he actually goes back to the council and tells them that, you know, he's figured out that you're trying to spy on him. And he gives them this information. Actually, he's talking to Master Windu. And uh, they have another discussion about him being on the council. And again, Master Windu is like, you know what, Anakin, if the information you gave me is true, then we'll, we'll, you will have earned my trust. Until then, stay here and we'll figure it out from there. And it's just one of those things where at every turn he's being upset of the apple cart. And so he stays and then he goes and then he's like, we need to 
they now understand. Oh, and then, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And then there's a showdown between Windu and uh, Emperor Palpatine. And Windu's winning, and he's going to take out Lord Palpatine. And he basically does because Palpatine tries to shoot lightning out of his hands, but he's getting older and his body can't take it and he's being drained. And Anakin at this point is there and they're arguing over who Anakin should trust because he's still at this point trying to make up his mind. And he takes out Master Windu. And so now he's betrayed the Jedi Order. He's sided with Palpatine. And because now Palpatine has revealed himself as a Sith Lord, and he's still playing the card of I can save Padme, he dubs him Darth Vader, and he doesn't have the iconic look yet. But then, you know, after the Jedi have all fallen, uh, Yoda shows up with... And Yoda and Palpatine have a skirmish and it's so weird because eventually it comes down to obi-wan and darth vader's epic showdown where anakin does not like i said take shape in the iconic outfit yet but during the battle obi-wan gets the best of him but the entire time he's like how could you you were the chosen one you were supposed to bring balance to the universe not make it live, live in darkness and he's like you were my brother Anakin I can't believe you've done this and the whole time so he he takes out and wins the victory over Darth Vader but somehow the uh, Sith Lord Lord Palpatine brings him back and basically skin grafts him and puts him in the iconic Darth Vader outfit and then as Anakin and or not Anakin, as 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 Yoda and Obi-Wan return to check on Padme, um, they don't know that she's pregnant. And it's revealed that she's having twins. And so it's decided by Obi-Wan and Yoda and a couple of others that they should separate the twins so that the Empire doesn't um try to find them and i guess padme moved on and you know at the end of the movie and this was what sealed it for me you can leave your comments down below and if you're still here and you like this video hit the like button it would really help the uh, spread of the channel through the galaxy of youtube and uh, yeah so he tell uh vader is up and he's in the iconic black outfit with the helmet and he asks, where's Padme? And he's like, Palpatine, again, manipulating Vader, was like, in your rage, you killed her. Or in your rage, you took her out. And he goes, no, I would never do that. And he goes, well, that's what happened. And he, the final shot is him going, no. And it's just a real powerful scene. And yeah, it's just one of those things. Again, drop a like on this video, subscribe if you want more of this content, and I'm on money and you've been at the movies.